In this video, I'm going to show you how I use ForeFlight on a trip um, and also a few of the settings that I have set in ForeFlight. So the first thing is I hardly ever use the synthetic vision in ForeFlight unless I'm flying over mountainous areas or if I'm on an approach. Um, I've found it extremely handy during a shooting an approach. But there's a few things that you're going to probably want to change if you do use it to shoot an approach. So yesterday I was flying up to Tennessee and I captured a few screenshots as I went along to, to kind of show you a few things. So right now you can see that I've actually got a trip uh, go to, going to a KMMI and I'm just flying along and I've got the synthetic vision on. And you can see the mountains that are starting to come up on the horizon there. Now, as I proceeded in through the trip, and I have to get back over here, you can you start to see some yellow that is showing up here on the horizon as I'm getting closer and closer to these mountains. And the reason is that I'm at 4,500 feet, and the default setting in uh, ForeFlight <clears throat> is uh, to, to show uh, hazardous terrain 1,000 foot below. So once you get over 100 feet uh, elevation and you've got a, a hazardous terrain within 1,000 feet of you, it, it highlights it, which is kind of handy when you're flying over this mountain range. But when you're shooting an approach, it's extremely distracting because you're coming down the glide path and all of a sudden everything starts to turn yellow in the corner of your eye because you're not using the iPad to actually shoot the approach. I just use it as a as a backup and to kind of give me another picture of what's going on. So to have all of those colors start to show up while you're shooting an approach um, isn't really the best feeling in the world to, to have to go through. So the the first thing that I do as I'm getting closer to the, the airport and I know what approach I'm going to be shooting is I'll edit my uh, course up at the top and I'll select the procedure button. So once you edit, you get the, the view where you can enter in additional waypoints. And over here on the right, you have procedure. So once I know that I'm going to be shooting an approach into an airport, I'm going to go edit this route, select procedure, and then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to select an approach. Once you select the approach, it, it lists what it thinks is going to be the best approach based on the winds in that, at that particular airport. Um, so you can select them, or if you've been given an approach by, the, by ATC, then you can select it. But in this case, yesterday, I went in and selected the RNAV for runway 20. Now, once I did that, there's a number of uh, approach procedures that we can use here and so it's asking me what waypoint I want to start the approach at well you can see my current course is going direct to the airport marble is actually the closest point to to getting me to where I want to be so the next thing is is that we're just going to select marble and once we do that you can see that it highlights the course that we're going to be taking on that to shoot that approach and then I'm just going to select the add to route button down here at the bottom now you can see that I've got the approach plate on my map along with the route that I'm going to be taking. And you can also see that the airplane is not on that route because me adding it to my current course actually took it from the original airport that I left from direct to marble. So the next step <clears throat> that we've got to go through is we've got to tell it that we want to go direct to marble and forget the original airport. And to do that, all we're going to do is select this arrow and the system will, it'll pop up and ask, do you want to go direct to marble? And you say yes. And you can see here that it's replaced my original airport with the coordinates of the, my current location. So now we've got a direct course to marble and then we can pick up this approach plate. Now, the next thing is what to do about the, the horizon or the, the hazardous terrain. And so you can see that it's starting to get more and more yellow. Now, what, what you do to fix that is you're going to go to more settings, and then you're going to go down to the hazardous altitudes. It's down toward the bottom of the list. And you can see by default we're set to showing hazardous terrain once we get 100 foot above the ground and then anything that's below or within 1,000 feet of us. 
Well, for shooting an approach, that that barely gets you on the glide sl- the glide slope. So what what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually set it to a helicopter and set it to 25 feet and 200. So I won't see any hazardous terrain start to show up until I get down to 200 feet, which is a little bit more. It's still it might be a little low, but it's usually going to be. Uh, pretty close to if if I start seeing hazardous terrain and I'm not seeing the airport then I know I have a problem so that's kind of the way that I think about this and again if I'm just flying cross country and I want to turn on synthetic vision um, like I did last night for example it was pitch black I'm flying out from KMMI headed back to my airport and it was you know I couldn't see anything and there's mountains everywhere well, I don't want to be a statistic and fly into a mountain, so I flip synthetic vision on so I can actually see the mountains out in front of me. Um, so in that particular case, I may come back over here and flip this back to a thousand feet. Um, but you know, the the point is is that synthetic vision is extremely useful, but it is really useful when you're shooting an approach. So now you can see that we're actually headed to marble. Um, I have flipped that to being on the the 200 foot level and you can see all of the terrain now is all just listed. It's not yellow, red or anything like that. And so here we're starting to turn on our approach path. So we've reached marble. We're heading into the, the next fix. So now you can see that because I've got the approach plate visible on the, the uh, map down here at the bottom, I'm actually able to have the approach and the synthetic vision up at the same time, which is extremely useful. So now we are on our course up to the next fix. And so we'll just jump on up here until we get there. So now we have reached the next fix and we're turning into the final approach fix. So now we are headed to the final approach fix. Now we're about to turn to head inbound. And now this is the, the next step that, that actually gets useful. And I'm not sure how close I got, but you can start, you see KMMI out here on the horizon. So with the synthetic vision on and my, my 430 that I'm actually shooting the approach on, I can see that that one I'm on the glide slope on the 430 which I don't have in this video but two I actually can see on the approach plate where I'm at I've got my altitudes down here at the bottom so a quick scroll up will show me the the altitudes and as I get closer to the airport you can start to see the runway show up so as I'm flying into the the runway I can not only look and see that I'm on course on my 430 I'm on the the approach path here you can see that the airplane here is a little bit to the left or pointing a little bit to the left of the runway and you can cross reference that here to see that at, indeed at that particular moment the the airplane was a little bit off the nose was a little bit off to the left so the, the system, and I didn't capture anything any closer because I was actually shooting the approach, um, but the, uh, the point is is that using your instruments in your airplane already and using the synthetic vision and the approach plates inside a fourth flight as a backup, um, I usually keep my, in my uh, 310, they're sitting up to the left on the, the commander, they're actually in the middle of the panel up on the, the front. But in any case, I just put it in my scan. So I don't use it. It's not my primary instrument that I'm using, but it is in my scan as I'm going through checking all my instruments to make sure that I'm actually on course and that what I'm seeing on my 430 agrees with what I'm seeing on my iPad and vice versa. So extremely handy processes built into ForeFlight. Um, and it, you know you, you ought to at least try it if you haven't uh, because it does give you a, a little bit better, actually a lot better situational awareness.